Hello, in this video we are going to work out the sum of an arithmetic progression or an AP. Okay, so we have described what, a, what an AP is in the past videos, uh, something that starts with a number and goes on with constant differences, um, say A0, A1, A2 and A3, so on and so forth. And now what, what we want to do is we want to ask ourselves what would be the sum of all these numbers that keep on adding up in a arithmetic style, or the fact that um, they add up with just a common difference in them. Okay, so we want to add all the numbers up and then produce a relation for that. Okay, so we have, a, say, an AP of the form um, A0. The next number can be A0 plus D, and the next number can be A0 plus 2D. All right, and since we start with this format, what do we know as the nth number? Well, the nth number in AP would be of the form a0 plus n minus 1 d. Okay, so that is how is what we talked about in the previous video. And if you if you're not sure how this comes about, then go have a look at that, and that will help you clarify as to why we're writing it in this format. Why why is there n minus 1 and the fact that what a and e signify, right? So we, let us call a sum. Let us call another variable variable s, and we equate it to the supposed sum of the sequence. So it goes on like that, continues like that, and we have to figure out what s would be as a function of a sub 0 and d. Now just a quick recap, a0 is itself the first number, and d is a common difference. Now the, the way to prove this, as to um, the, the way to um, get a functional form for s, is that we say, okay, well we basically write the series um, in, in reverse fashion, that is we say, okay, let's, let's write the last term first, so let's write the nth term here. Um, so that would be a0 n minus 1 d and here let's write um, the n minus 1th term so if you put in those values you get a0 plus n minus 2 d and in this term you would have something like a0 plus n minus 3 d because this is the n minus 2th number and so on and so forth until we get the last number and we're basically writing this number here and then the one that follows up there and the one that follows up there so on and so forth so the last number has to be this number, right? So if that's the case, then the last number would be a sub, a sub 0 right there, okay? Now, that is the same sum. What we're doing is we're just reversing the order. Uh, let me just put plus signs there, all right? Now, so that means nothing has really changed. We're just changing the order in which we're writing. Now, what we can do is we can actually take a sum on both sides of the equality. That is, we add this number to this. So when we add a number to its own number, to its own self, then we basically get two times the original number. So that's 2 times s. And if you note this summation, which is this, then that should work out to be, well, 2a0 plus n minus 1d. Okay, similarly, we do the same thing for this summation, which is right there. And that should work out to be, well, add the a's together. So a sub 0, that gives you 2a sub 0. Add this term, so that's d n minus 2 from here plus 1 from this one, which is the coefficient of d, right? When you do the math, minus 2 plus 1 is, well, minus 1. So you have the same thing. The other way to write this is just n minus 1d. Okay, and we do the same thing again. So let's do the same thing here just to be sure that this is the same term we are getting by adding up these, uh, these numbers in that fashion. So a sub 0 gets added twice. And if you notice, this is n minus 3, then we have to add 2 to that. So we have n minus 3 plus 2, and minus 3 plus 2 is minus 1. So we get n, sorry, that's a negative 1, and times d, we have to add this together. Okay, so that, that is going to be, that looks like that's going to be the sum for all the cases. And if you note here as well, well, you're doing nothing different, different here. This is simply this case, and all you're doing is you're changing the order. So that's still, still choose a sub 0 plus n minus 1 times d. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. What we get is that if we if we get like if we if we want to figure out the, what two times s two times the original sum of the series is going to be, it simply looks like we're adding the same number n times because remember this is the first number in the AP, this is the second number, and this is the nth number, right? So that means if this has been taken up one times, this has been taken up two times, three times, so on. So this is taking this is being written for the nth time. Okay, so this is like the nth number, so to say, in this uh, expression. So what we can do is, since some, the same number, this quantity, has been repeated n times here as well, 
then what we can say is 2 times s should be n times this value, which is 2a, this right there, okay? And what that gives us now is all we are left, left to do is just divide the entire damn thing with s, oh sorry, with 2, and we get the same there as well. So we have a form s equals n by 2, 2a sub 0 plus n minus 1 times d. So this is going to be our expression for the sum of n numbers in an AB. So this is going to be sum of n, n terms in an AP starting with a sub 0. Okay, so that's pretty important here because we're starting with a sub 0 and ending at the nth term from a sub 0, which is a sub 0 plus n minus 1 d. So we have to take this into account. Anyway, this is going to be the expression that we must employ in order to find out what the sum of n terms in an AP is going to be. All right, so just a quick example. And we're going to look at this sum quite excessively if you end up taking more math courses and also appears in physics many times. Um, so what we do is let's take an example. Okay, let's have to work with an example. So we want to add up, um, say, first 100, first, say, n integers, okay? First n integers. So we know that the first in integer is going to be, well, so that series is going to look like 1, and the next one is going to be 2, 3, so on and so forth, and the last one has to be n. Okay, so we can take the very n as much as we, as we want. Now, the first thing to do is we want to sum all these up and get an expression for this, and we want to call it s, like we did here, is to ask ourselves, is this an AP? So, is it an AP? Well, the answer to that is pretty straightforward. We have to look and check whether it's an AP or not. And we do that by looking at the difference between consecutive terms. So here the difference becomes 2 minus 1, which is 1, and here it becomes 3 minus 1, which is 1 again. And if you note, the next number is going to be 4, and the difference is going to be 1. So we see that the difference holds up. So there is something that we can call d, and d happens to be the common difference, which is just 1. Now, we also need to know another variable that appears in this expression, which is a sub 0. a sub 0 is the number with which the AP starts. So this is an AP, and it starts from the number 1. So a sub 0 has to be 1. Now, we, now that we have satisfied ourselves with the question that it is an AP, all right, now what we can do is we can simply say, well, then in that case, we know what the sum is going to be using this expression. So we have to add uh, these terms and n of these terms, and we must use the expression n by 2. n is the number, the number of integers we are willing to consider. 2 times, well, a sub 0, which is 1. And then n minus 1, so that's a negative, n minus 1 times d, and d itself is 1. Okay, So we get a nice little formula, which is n by 2, and then we have 2 plus n minus 1. Now, 2 minus 1 is just 1, so we have n by 2 times n plus 1. So the sum of first n integers happens to be n n plus 1 by 2. All right, so this is what the sum is going to be like. Now, if, say, we were to add up 1 plus 2 plus 3 up till um, 9 plus 10, then if this is the sum of the first 10 integers, then the sum has to be equal to, well, we just have to substitute 10 for n, and we will get 10, 10 plus 1 divided by 2 using this formula, and that gives us, well, 5 times, this goes by this, 5 times 11, which is 55. So that's the sum of first n integers in um, well, mathematics. So there you go, that is the sum of n terms in an AP, and this is an example where we end up using it, taking a more complicated variation of this example, and I hope this video helps and have fun.